flip the page Give it some more Getting out of my way I was hiding Bulletproof Forever waiting Then came you I thought I was What I've been told I thought I was I thought I was What I've been told I thought Hi guys, welcome back at my YouTube channel. Today I have a bit of a different video for you guys because I'm going to answer some of your questions. I posted a story and I asked you to send in the questions you had for me because I have eight dogs, seven Seftable Terriers and four puppies. So I thought a lot of people would have questions about it. So I'm gonna prepare better for, I think there's a little tiny animal in my pen, so I need to go and check that because I'm allergic as hell for everything outside at the moment. So because I thought people would have questions about my situation at the moment, I thought it would be nice to answer some questions. Um, I'm gonna do it while I'm working the dogs because I don't have that much time that I can sit down for 20 or 30 minutes and just talk. So I will combine it. I have a microphone so you should be able to hear me. So the question I got a lot was if I plan to keep all the pups and how it's possible that I have four puppies, so I will explain that first. Good job! Um, I plan to do a litter with Bera because she is a very all-round dog for me and um, she's healthy, so I would like to breed a litter. So <clears throat> I had chosen my male that I'd like to use for her and I made sure I had a nice banner for on Instagram and then before the letter was born already three pups were sold. Sadly enough I didn't have enough bitches in the litter so that meant that one person um, didn't want to buy a puppy from this litter and I totally get it because um, she just wanted a female and that's okay because I had my preference for females as well in the letters of uh, Berab and Dean so I just get that you would like to have a female or a male but Berab gave us three males and one female so and the female I wanted to keep myself so that's where um, I got an extra puppy available and I think five days after the birth of the pups all puppies were spoken of again so then you just stop advertising them because you're like well, yeah they have a home but sadly enough after I think five or six weeks the first puppy got cancelled um, and not too long from then, at seven or seven and a half weeks, the second puppy got cancelled. The first puppy that got cancelled was the black brindle male. And I thought, well, that's the puppy that will be sold the most easy because he has a get it? more easygoing character. Um, so I didn't worry that much about that dog. Um, and the red one was supposed to go abroad, so he was already staying longer than the other puppies. Um, but he got cancelled and that's a dog that really needs a working home, because he's just a dog that really needs to work. Um, he's very physical 
like he just jumps on everything he hits everything um, so that's a dog that really needs to go and work so I already thought it would be harder for him to find the right home so after 10 weeks I decided that he probably would stay and I don't mind him staying but then I would already have three puppies staying so the black brindle mill got sold again and I was really happy with that and he was picked up and I was super super glad that I had one puppy less to take care of but sadly enough after five days they called me and they said that it was just not doable for them and that's totally fine I like to have puppy buyers that are honest and not acting like everything is okay when it's not okay for them because um, having a pup is a lot so that's when I picked him up again and um, I wanted to make sure there were no problems with him before selling him again and um, in the end I didn't have really serious interest anymore for my pups because they are already five months old now and um, I must say the people that are interested are people that don't have ambitions to have a working dog and the black brindle male doesn't really need that hard of a working home but I like to sell my pups to active homes so I'm not looking for people that just want to walk 15 minutes in the neighborhood because I just think that's not enough for any kind of dog because I think their world is staying way too small then so I'm just looking for people that are really active and I, you don't need to be like that active as I am because I'm just spending all my free time on my dogs but I like to place my puppies in homes that are active and show them the world and get out with the dogs and just find a hobby for them with the dogs so um, the only reactions I've got were people that were looking for a dog to just sit on the couch and just walk 15 minutes and that's not what I'm looking for so then I decided it was best if I don't find the homes that I had in mind for them that they would stay because um, I'm not selling the pups to sell them like I don't need the money and I only want to sell them if my feeling is 100% right with the persons that want to buy a puppy for me and with the person that wanted a female that feeling is still 100% right I would send every dog to that one but the other ones that were sending messages only ask about the price and then I just don't send a reaction because if that's the only thing you want to know I don't think you're really looking for what I bred um, and uh, as I said I really want my dogs to see the world and not to be a couch potato that only walks 15 minutes in the neighborhood so maybe I'm very picky but I think a dog deserves to see the world and go out and have fun that girly so I'm not going to sell them for less and that's a commitment that I made and a promise that I made to myself and I need to keep true to that and not going to sell dogs just to sell dogs and I would um, care too much if I saw that a dog just doesn't get what it needs so that's why they are still with me so um, that's how I got four puppies easy easy but girly so no it was definitely definitely not to plan because I would have kept two 
so I would have kept the pied male and the female because breeding wise that was the smartest choice and working wise the white uh, with red pied male was exactly what I needed for what I want to do with my dog so that's why I chose him from the males and the female would stay as well um, now I have all four and must say it's super fun to see how different they are like the pied male is already showing so much so much talent for the man trailing he is exactly why I did this litter good job so that's really nice to see that genetics are really a thing and Berab has a huge talent for man trailing the male also did some search work and you really can see these dogs just do it naturally so that's super fun to see and I'm really happy to see that the one that I was keeping really shows that talent for it. Get girly. Yeah, I saw you hurting your paw. Um, come here. So the second dog is warmed up. I'm just gonna uh, uh, wait and take the picture of the questions and see what question is next so how do I combine it with work um, that's a good question as I work 34 and a half hours a week I'll leave it but the good thing is that I can bring the dogs with me to work so that means, no, that's a microphone, girly. Um, that on my working days, the dogs have a resting day. That means that they only go for walks and no crazy stuff on these days. And on my days off, so that's Wednesday, Thursday, Saturday afternoon, wait, and Sunday. So on so my f days off, Wednesday, Thursday, Saturday afternoon and Sunday, I work the dogs and then, oh, girly, yeah, well, you need to run a bit. You need to run a bit. Good job. Good girly. So that's what I'm doing today. Today it's Wednesday and I already walked five and a half kilometers with all six the Savage Bull Terriers because later today I have a men trailing training and that means that half of my day is already scheduled full. Um, so that means I just need to be fast today. That that's why I took them out all six already. So they already had the first kilometers in their feet and then the girls do some flood pull and I will take out the puppies individually to search for their food. And then they all, all already had a good start. And then two of the pups will do the men trailing training today. Um, so that's how I do it with work. So on my days off, they work, and I think people underestimate the importance of giving your dogs a resting day. As the bodies really need to recover from all the crazy shit my dogs do. So on my days that I work, on the days that I work, they really have the resting days so the bodies can recover and I don't overwork them because you actually can overwork your dog. So that's why I'm trying to prevent with having these real resting days. Get it? Timmy? Good 
job. Good girly. So I'm gonna look for the next question because I can't talk about this that long because it's not that crazy. Um, how do you deal with dog aggression and prey drive while walking them? Well, dog aggression is very simple at my place. As soon as they start showing dog aggression, I will muzzle them because sadly enough, a lot of people have their dogs off leash where it's not allowed. And the thing is, even if I have my dog leashed where it should be on leash, um, I always will get blamed for them biting. So it's not like you can say, well, my dog was leashed, so it doesn't matter that he bit the other dog. You always need to prevent that from happening. So even though the other dog is off leash, you can't just think as simple as, well, it's off leash where it's not allowed, so it's okay for my dog to bite. In the end, they can take your dog from you. And that's what I really don't want to happen. So I muzzle train all my dogs and uh, Mule is the first pup that already showed dog aggression. So he's already wearing the muzzle while walking. And Berab and Dino always muzzled when walking because they will grab other dogs when they come near. So um, that's the dog aggression thing. I train my dogs to ignore other dogs. So um, that's a thing that I already start early. So just don't interact with dogs, just be neutral. Just don't care about them, even though the other dog is acting out. And there are days that they do great. And there are days that they have a hard time with that. But that's okay. But that's also how I deal with dog aggression. I try to teach them to ignore other dogs. But it's very hard for them, I know. So when they have an off day, I just know they won't be able to ignore. Good girly. Just wait, wait. Wait, wait, wait. Good girl. Yeah, good girly. Get it. Good job. Good job. So prey drive. Um, it's something I don't really control, as in, I don't tell them no, because in the sports, as you can see, I want them to chase things. It's something a terrier does naturally, so they are bred to kill small animals, and these ones are bred to fight other animals as well, but the terrier part is really killing small animals. So that's something they do. These dogs are impulsive and I don't really want to take all of that out. So I'm not a person that really focuses on um, impulse control or ignoring wildlife, like small wildlife. Um, that's not something I think it's import is important for my dogs because in the end I want them to chase the little bags, I want them to chase the lure and they just love to do that and I like to have the impulse of dogs so for me it's not a problem there are people who really want to control the impulses on their dogs for me that's not that important so that's not something I really focus on um, they know they can't chase deer when we're biking so when we cross paths with a group of deers then they will go very fast but they don't go to the left or the right where the deers went off um, so that's something I kind of control um, but when walking yeah they will go fast when seeing a deer but my dogs don't walk off leash I only have one puppy that walks off leash and that's the black brindle boy because he's very neutral but like Berab and Dean they, they just can't go off leash because they will kill everything that comes in their way only people are safe for them so um, 
it's not a focus point for me because I don't need it. I need impulsive dogs that just go, don't think and like to chase. And it's something that's in terrier. So if you don't like dogs that are impulsive, then you shouldn't buy a terrier, I think, because that's their nature. They were bred to kill small animal and don't think about their actions. So if you don't like an impulsive dog, don't buy a terrier. That's my opinion, because that's what they do. And of course you can train them to behave in certain situations but I don't think it's fair to uh, want a terrier to be completely um, controlling its impulses in all situations because they are not bred for that. Get it, get it. If you want a dog that is really good on that, there are other breeds that are more suitable for you. Get it, uh, get it, good job. Jappy. So, next question. It's gonna check. Um, I only have one. Where do you get the energy to do everything? Well, I was more energetic than most kids when I was young, and I still am very energetic. I work 34 and a half hours and must say that it's costing more energy than it brings me but working the dogs brings me more energy than it costs so i really love to spend my days outside with the dogs and working them mm -hmm. and must say having this many dogs was always kind of the dream i didn't want it to be from one litter i hope to breed a litter with Berb and then with Dean if she's healthy and have this amount of the dogs then but it was already a bit earlier but must say it just gives me so much energy yeah I know girl I know it's okay we're gonna take your bandages off so it really gives me a lot of energy and it keeps me um, good in the head because um, um, at my work I see a lot I see people who don't want to take care of their animals I see people that don't are, are, aren't able to take care of the animals because of all the bills um, I see dogs and cats that suffer from how they look I see dogs and cats that aren't having a fulfilled life like my animals do. So I see a lot while working. Uh, you deal with emotions a lot because the one moment you have a small little puppy and the next moment there is um, a dog that comes to be put down. So um, mentally this work can be a bit challenging. Um, so this is my passion. I always say it's passion, it's more than a hobby for me. And it gives me energy, it makes sure that my head stays clear, that I don't go and overthink things. Good girl, good job. Yeah, I know, little mousy. So that's <laughs> how I'm able to do this, because it gives more than it takes. And as long as that's the case, then it's a good case. Because then you're able to do it for a long time like this. So now I have already had a good walk. Must say that was kind of challenging because that was the first time walking all six the Savage Bull Terriers together alone. And now I already ha had the girls out. They already had to do something fun. So I'm going to cool this one down and then the pups are getting out of the car. And then I will spend my afternoon with people who are giving their dogs a hobby and are like-minded in the way they treat dogs. And these people are very positive as well. So 
that's giving me a lot of energy as well. So I surround myself with my dogs who give me a lot of energy and sometimes they take, but that's what happens with every situation. Sometimes it takes a bit more than you normally would expect it to take, but overall the dogs give me more energy than they take. And then I surround myself with positive people because I think if you surround yourself with positive people you can um, pull yourself up on that even if you have an off day you can surround yourself with these people and they will get you up on your feet and give you more energy than they take so that's how I deal and how I try to make sure I will be able to give my dogs everything they need I need to be positive and feel energetic and that's how I feel most of the days and I surround myself with people that really want to work the dogs and are positive and not looking at a glass of water that's half empty but it's half full so yeah that's how I try to stay the way I am at not, right now because I feel very happy and blessed with everything I can do and it gives me a lot of energy especially the weather it's giving me lots and lots of energy right now so yeah hope I answered your question with this one I think this will be a long video because I only answered four questions I think yeah Dini I know the next question is do they all get along and how do I manage them during feeding time and exercise time and etc <laughs> So no, not all my dogs are okay with each other. So Bernd and Dean, they will kill each other when I put them off leash together in the house. So they live separated and Mil is showing aggression against Dean and Dean is showing aggression against Mil. So these ones are separated as well. Um, so I just have groups. When Dini is out in the house, uh, out of a kennel, then I have Dre and Len out of their kennels. They don't really have kennels, but I can put them in a separate room. And I have Baltus, Lise or Hari out of the crate as well. And I just... Um, leave one puppy out for one and a half hour and then the next puppy comes out and as soon as it's meal his turn then Dean goes into her kennel and Bert comes out of her kennel because Bert can live with meal perfectly so that's how I get all the dogs out in the house and um, Bert is a princess so she sleeps in my bed so she isn't in a crate during the night and the others are because it's just not doable to not crate dogs if you own a breed that's showing dog aggression <laughs> and it's not something that's trainable in a way that Berb and Dean can live together again so it's just the risk is too high. A lot of people think, well, you can do it, but no. Um, there will always be a risk that they start fighting and I don't want to live in that stress constantly because it's giving the dog stress as well because they know they are actually not allowed to do it, but their brain just tells them that they have to kill each other. So. It's just better for the dogs to keep them separated and much easier for myself as well. Mm -hmm. um, when it's feeding time, I put all the puppies in the crates because food is something these dogs uh, fight over very easily um, and I don't want to have accidents. So, so around feeding time I want to create an easygoing atmosphere in the house so that's why I just put them in the crates that's the place where they just turn off because they learned that already so in the house and in their crates they just need to turn off 
we go crazy outside but inside the house it's just a resting place so that's what happens the dogs just go in their crates and I prepare the food and of course they will make some noise if I prepare the food because if I yeah well I'm eating twice a day but I won't make noise when I'm preparing my own food but they are really hungry when they get their food and these dogs all have a huge huge food drive so food is something very important for them so the, of course they make a bit of noise but that's okay and then I just feed them and then they go out one by one and I always feed them bef right before we go to bed so when they were out to do the last pee then um, they go to bed and I don't know if you've seen it on my Instagram but they all have a very big kennel on my room in my room they have one meter in the length um, 66 centimeters in the height so first puppy is out to search for his lunch this is Baltus when he's searching for his food I can look for the next question No. So, next question is how do you manage each dog's devoted time for training activities and sports? Um, as I already said, I have three and a half days each week that I have all the time to train the dogs, to work the dogs and I spend these days working them all day so I get up early, I go to bed a bit later now because the sun is out longer but in winter during the evening there's nothing to do anymore as in I don't go to the forest then but now the good season starts and I just get, have a lot of time to train the dogs so on the days off I really try to get uh, each dog out separately at least once a day because um, it's very important that they really get their one-on-one -on -one time um, but on these days it's very easy for me to manage that um, two puppies are men training at the moment so they already have one training a week with the group of people I told you about earlier um, so on this day the other two pups will today they will search for their food but on other days they will get in different activities so that way I make sure all the dogs have their one-on-one -on -one time I just get to do something extra um, but that's only because I have three and a half days each week that I just can't spend with them um, on the days when I work that are the resting days and as I said earlier it's very important to give your dog resting days as well um, I take them with me they go out in the morning then uh, I make sure I'm at work early so I can already give them a short walk then then around 11 o'clock in the morning they go out again then when I have my break around one o'clock two o'clock and then around four four thirty they go out again and then when I'm done working mostly around seven o'clock but it can be a bit later um, there are days that I can take two puppies inside they will spend half a day in the kennel at work but then they can see a lot of people they see dogs they see hear cats they smell cats so they get stimulated as well while just relaxing so um, if I have a day like that two puppies in the, puppies in the morning two pups in the afternoon on the Saturdays mostly I take them 
in all because then I walk ho I walk I work half a day and then I just have them all four mostly we, most of the time we don't have a lot of dogs in um, the crates on these days on on Saturday so that's why I can take them all four in and they really enjoy it and Baltus come see let's see wait I thought I saw a tick but that's not true I just see things that aren't there so that's how I manage them to get all the time they need and yes it's hard work because I have eight dogs now to work luckily my Leonberg is a very chill dog this so if I just give her one good walk a day she's okay and Dre is officially my parents dog so I take him out whenever I can but not a must mm -hmm. um, somebody asked why I did keep all the pups I already answered that question I think I'm just gonna check the Instagram if I have gotten extra questions and otherwise I've answered all the questions so far so I'm gonna check but I don't think I've got extra questions and um, somebody t asked what went wrong with the puppy buyers but I'm not gonna tell everything in detail because I don't think that's fair but you just know that they got cancelled and that's all you need to know about the situation so I think I answered all your questions and I will spend my day having fun with my dogs today so if you have any more questions just, just send me a message on Instagram or just leave them below and then I will answer them good boy Baltus Baltus Yum, yum, yum. So, I'm gonna thank you for watching this video and I hope to see you on the next one. I think this video will be uploaded as an extra video this week because I'm not sure if you like this type of videos. So, I just will upload this one and then we'll see how everybody likes it or how everybody dislikes it. Um, so if you have any questions just leave them below or send me a message on Instagram and um, then I will answer them in the next video. So thanks for watching, bye bye!